everyone, my name is Marissa. I am a naturalist here at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Today I am in our Dalton Discovery Center and I'm going to be taking you on a guided nature center tour. Here I am in our uplands portion of the Dalton Discovery Center and with me I have Leroy. He is a Florida king snake and he is actually native to our area here. And you can find him in places like our uplands because he likes to live in those dry habitats that have trees and shrubs where he can hide. So a habitat is where animals call their home. It is where they live. Um, it provides them with shelter, food, water, air, and reptiles like this, they depend on those habitats to survive. So they will be looking for their food. They depend on the natural sunlight to get warm because they are cold blooded. So here in our uplands, we do have three other resident snakes. We have Bindi, an eastern indigo snake. We have Sheldon, a yellow rat snake, and Snakester, our red rat snake. Lots of other animals call the uplands home, including birds, butterflies, owls, lots of different animals. So now we have moved on to our scrub ecosystem, and they are characterized by shrubs, smaller trees, and sand. So an animal that likes these kinds of habitats are gopher tortoises. So this is a model of a gopher tortoise, and they actually will dig their burrows to escape the hot sun, especially in the summer. And these burrows are important for over 200 different species of animals to survive all throughout the year. So now we are in our hardwood hammock. This area has a lot of tall oak trees and saw palmettos. The animals that like to live in this habitat include bobcats, owls, and even panthers. So Florida panthers are an endangered species and they require over 200 square miles to live. Next up, we're gonna be going into our cypress swamp and I have another animal friend for you to meet. So now we are in our cypress swamp. This habitat is the first one you're seeing that has water. The water behind me is a freshwater source, and animals that like this freshwater include alligators, fish, and even otters. So I do have one of our American alligator ambassadors here today, and his name is Timon. The other two we have in the tank behind me are Simba and Pumbaa. So alligators do have 80 teeth. They're born with those 80 teeth, and if one falls out, another one will just replace it. They also have two sets of eyelids. So they have a normal set of eyelids like us, and then they have a second set called a nictitating membrane. So the nictitating membrane is special because the eyelid actually goes from left to right, from side to side. And this allows them to go in and out of the water with ease so that they can see prey underwater and above the water. They also have the yellow stripes as babies so that they can help camouflage into the water. When they get older and bigger, they are also known as a keystone species. And what this means is that they basically provide services that all different kinds of animals and different species depend on in the wild. We have moved from our cypress swamp into our mangrove habitat. Here in Southwest Florida, we have red, black, and white mangroves. Mangroves are part of an estuary system and this involves brackish water, which is a mixture of salt and fresh water. Here you might find uh, juvenile animals such as sharks, fish, even sea turtles. Sometimes you might even be able to see a manatee because they like that warm water and they can survive in the brackish ecosystem. We are standing in front of our three small aquariums here in the Dalton Discovery Center. They represent ecosystems that work together in habitats right offshore. The first one is our oyster reef and oysters are filter feeders and they help to clean the water so that animals can see and breathe better in the water. The next tank is our mangrove tank. So I know we talked a little bit about mangroves before, but they are also known to be a storm surge buffer. So when hurricanes come, they can help protect the land right behind them so that it doesn't cause as much damage. The last tank is our seagrass bed tank. And this seagrass helps a lot of animals and they try to find shelter and find their food in that seagrass. We are in our touch tank exhibit, which is a salty ecosystem. So this area is a crowd favorite just because a lot of people like to come here and touch lots of different animals that they might see up on some of the beaches. Next, I'm gonna be showing you a few of those animals up close. So these guys are actually called decorator urchins because they like to decorate themselves with a lot of different shells. So you can see he's already done that 
and they use this for protection against other predators so that they blend in well with the sea floor and use that for their camouflage. They also will use their tiny arms on the side that you can kind of see, and those will help them bring the shells up to their body, and it also allows them to bring their food to their mouth. So those tube feet that you might be seeing in the water there, that's what they use to grab onto a lot of different things. Next up, we have our horseshoe crab. And you might notice these guys like to bury in the sand. He's actually hiding right now and they like to bury themselves so that they aren't seen by other predators. So this guy, they're called horseshoe crabs. And a fun fact about them, they actually have 10 eyes. You might not be able to see them because they're very small, but they're all over the top of that shell there. They also do have 10 legs on their underside and there are five sets on each side of the exact same legs. You can see their mouth right in the middle and that's how they bring their food into their mouth. And the tail right there that you're seeing, it's not a stinger or anything. It just helps them to flip over if they get flipped by a wave or another animal out in the wild. And these guys, they are prehistoric. They've been around since before the dinosaurs and they also will try to bury themselves. So you can see him there, he's probably gonna try to bury but they are crabs, so that means they are going to molt, which means they form another shell over top when they're growing. And then they will swim out of that shell and form a new hard shell. The next animal we're gonna talk about is the spider crab. So they actually get that name because they resemble spiders and have long legs like a daddy long leg spider. They also have very small pinchers for their uh, body in proportion. So they will use those pinchers to try and grab on eat any of the food that they have, and they may also try to decorate themselves like the other decorator urchin. So the last animal we're gonna be talking about in our touch tank is our fighting conch. So you can see they do have that arm-like structure, and that's how they're gonna flip themselves over in the water if they do get tumbled over by a wave. Um, they do have two eyes. You can kind of see them right there, and that's how they're gonna be looking out for predators or other prey. And they also will have that siphon that kind of sticks out. That's how they move around. And that's how they're gonna be finding their food sources like algae or anything else. This is our last stop on the tour of the nature center. So behind me, we have our patch reef tank and patch reefs are a smaller version of our barrier reefs. Patch reefs can usually be found off of the coast here in the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of different species use this reef for their habitat, for their shelter, because they like to be in dark places, and also for their food sources. Some animals you might find here would be fish, stingrays, sea turtles, even eels. Thank you so much for joining us on a tour of the Dalton Discovery Center today. I hope you enjoyed meeting our animal ambassador friends and learning all about the habitats here in Southwest Florida.